Howdy y'all, welcome back to the channel. In making these videos, one of my favorite things to do is to read through your comments afterwards to try and pick up a detail or two that I may have missed. And in the last video that I made about Belfast, Northern Ireland, one thing that seemed to come up a few times in the comments is some people were upset that I did not address the history of Belfast after the year 1900. This is mostly because I didn't want to focus on war and on the negativity and things like that. However, I did want to dive back into Ireland because really abundantly in those comments, people were asking for more photographs, more that I could find. And the oldest photographs of Belfast themselves seem to indicate that this entire area, the whole landscape itself, was shaped at a much, much earlier time. So today, we're going to be diving into what I would consider to be one of the most incredible videos that I could make on the land of the Irish, or Ireland. We have recently gone through what I genuinely thought to be the oldest and most detailed images of Belfast that were ever taken. However, in my ever-boiling Irish blood and from a slew of hungry commenters who simply wanted more, I've decided to try to dive even deeper into the often hidden old world files and I was able to find 125 photographs of old world Ireland which depict the country in some of the finest details that we have seen before the year 1900. Now, what makes this video absolutely worth watching and one I believe you will truly enjoy and what adds more fuel to the fire of our ever-expanding questions about the past is the fact that all 125 of these images are said to be 3D in nature. Now, while I'm not going to explain it in full detail as it may bore you, essentially one image would go over one of your eyes and the other image would go over the other eye. They had many different devices that were created to view images like this. However, I was not familiar with this being one of the earlier photograph technologies because making a rapid photograph like this, where you would take one photograph and then a second photograph right afterwards, or sometimes these images were said to be taken simultaneously, this would indicate that the flash on the camera would have to be very quick to create such a intricate 3D image. Now, I must also make note here, we have this technology for taking these two photographs rapidly or at the same time to create this 3D image, and they were often kept in glass slides, which is why they seem to be so well preserved throughout time. However, none of the 125 of these 3D glass slides in this video are ones that I had ever seen before. These images, which at least 30% of all of them were taken in the 1860s and none of them were taken after 1899, seem to imply that photography itself was much more advanced at this time than we are often given credit for in the history books and things like that. Expanding on that idea, with many of the most brutal wars, including the American Civil War, which literally reshaped the landscape of America, with new trenches being built everywhere, removal of native mounds everywhere, and the construction of these forts, mostly star forts, happening everywhere, we find it odd that there is literally no strong pictorial or photographic evidence of any of these actions taking place. Whether they were to be war shots or construction shots of the forts 
All we simply have are aftermath photographs during the Civil War showing basically carcasses and these destroyed forts. Yet, as we showcase in this video, images from the same time period, we have highly detailed action photographs, which seem to depict tiny details like a horse's hoof being caught in mid-air or mid-trot with relative ease. It's just interesting to compare these images to what we are told about the Civil War image capability, almost as if the Civil War images were either manufactured or the best of them were hidden because they had details that were not supposed to be seen by the public. But alas, I digress. Now, trying to tie this back to my original video on Belfast, Northern Ireland, we will not just be showcasing Belfast in the images in this video, as I've decided to also include really all photographs of relevance that were taken between the year 1860 and 1899 in Ireland. Every single one of these particular photographs comes to us from the private collections of the Library of Congress of America. And these all took a bit of digging and elbow grease for me to be able to access them. What we see throughout these images is a land that is clearly appearing much older than even the ancient castle dates which we are given. While at the same time, we are told many of these villages and structures are relatively new when compared to the timeline of the photographs that we are given. But what do you think? Again, if you're watching this video and you have a 3D headset or even one of those cheaper headsets that you can attach your cell phone to, I would try and do that just to view some of these 3D images because it's really interesting how detailed they are and seemingly how advanced that technology was for the time. Granted, these photographs are nearly 150 years old, if not older, and yet the 3D quote-unquote capabilities of the photographs still seem to hold up in many of them and seem to show even more details when viewed in that sort of 3D environment. I am eventually going to try to zoom in on these images just a little bit after a small time frame so I can give you a moment to view some of these details up close if you do not have a 3D headset or anything like that. But I will also try to leave these wide 3D shots up long enough for you to be able to enjoy them and to point out some of the details that stand out to you. Because again, these are some of the more detailed images we have from the 1800s in general. Some of the more detailed 3D or glass slide images that I have ever seen. And the fact that a major portion of all of these images were taken in the early to mid 1860s is also very revealing as well. I'm also now going to read an excerpt that I found from a children's teaching program basically being presented to our kids in schools all around the United States dealing with the history of Ireland. And I found this to be absolutely ironic. This is apparently the history in its entirety as it's being taught at a ninth grade or high school level. The lack of important details here is shocking, but compare what I'm about to say, this quote current narrative history in modern kids learning lessons to the absolutely oldest photographs of Ireland we viewed all throughout this video, the oldest photographs known to exist, and let me know what you think in the comments down below, because to me, it creates quite a dichotomy indeed almost as if they had something to hide when they were writing the simple history to begin with and to be reshaped and presented to the rest of the world. Again, this all seems to begin in the 1850s. However, this excerpt from a 2008 history lesson on Ireland seems to leave out every single detail that involves the old world at all. 
And just to further reference this, this is from an online teacher's helper's guide or an online place that you can send your kids to learn. It's called abcteach.com. I don't know if you've ever watched the History Channel or even if you've watched maybe with your kids the Disney Channel, but I've seen ads for this website basically saying, oh, why send your kids to school when we can teach them these lessons at home? Now, this is their full lesson or the full history, at least given briefly, of Ireland. And it's followed by a bunch of follow-up questions. Essentially, this is one day's school plan, and that is all that they give to the history of Ireland. Now, and I quote, Today, Ireland is a country with a bright future. In 2005, Economist magazine selected it as the best place in the world to live. Hundreds of thousands of people from all over the world share that opinion and have moved there in the last decade. But this optimistic outlook was not always the case. Ireland has a long, often bloody and tragic history. Ireland was first settled around the year 8000 BC when hunter-gatherers came from Great Britain and Europe, possibly by a land bridge. They lived by hunting and fishing for about 4,000 years. Around 4,000 BC, they began to farm, and the old hunter-gatherer lifestyle gradually died out. The descendants of these original settlers built burial mounds and impressive monuments such as Ireland's most famous prehistoric site, New Grange. New Grange is a stone tomb dated to some time before 3000 BC, older than the pyramids in Egypt. Early Irish society was organized into a number of kingdoms with rich culture, a learned upper class, and artisans who created elaborate and beautiful metalwork with bronze, iron, and gold. Irish society was pagan, for thousands of years, this changed in the early 5th century AD when Christian missionaries, including the legendary St. Patrick, arrived. Christianity replaced the old pagan religions by the year 600. The early monks introduced the Roman alphabet to what had been largely an oral culture. They wrote down part of the rich collection of traditional stories, legends, and mythology that might have otherwise been lost. Two centuries later, from the early 9th century AD, Vikings then invaded Ireland. These attacks went on for over 100 years. At first, the Vikings raided monasteries and villages, eventually they built settlements on the island, many of which grew into the important towns of today. Irish cities founded by the Viking invaders include Dublin, the capital city of the Republic of Ireland, as well as Limerick, Cork, and Wexford. Irish society eventually assimilated the descendants of the Vikings. The year 1169, saw another invasion that had severe consequences for the island. An invasion of Norman mercenaries marked the beginning of more than seven centuries of Norman and English rule in Ireland. The Norman-English control over Ireland was expanded until the beginning of the 13th century when the new rulers began to be assimilated into Irish society as had the Vikings before them. The Reformation brought this time of relative peace to a brutal end. Beginning in 1534, military campaigns put down Irish chiefs who would not submit to the English king. People were massacred. A policy of plantations began. Land was confiscated from Catholic Irish landowners and given to Protestant settlers from England and Scotland. 
during the next century and a half, Catholic Ireland was conquered and religion became a source of division and strife, a role it held until recent times. During the 18th century, many laws were passed that discriminated against Catholics. The native Gaelic language was banned in schools. By 1778, only 5% of the land was owned by Catholics. In 1801, the Irish Parliament was abolished and Ireland became part of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. Catholics could not hold parliamentary office until 1829. Poverty was widespread. For many Irish, potatoes were the most important food. In 1845, disaster struck, the potato blight. This disease destroyed much of the potato crop for the next few years. The cause of the blight was not immediately understood and the English rulers did little to help the situation. About a million people died of starvation or disease. Another million emigrated to escape poverty and starvation. Because of the potato blight, the population of Ireland fell from more than 8 million in 1841 to about 6 million in 1852 the population continued to decline more slowly until the second half of the 20th century. Efforts to gain home rule and improve the condition of the people went on during the 19th century. There were movements for land reform and movements to make Gaelic the official language of Ireland once again. There was strong Protestant opposition to these demands. By 1900, civil war loomed. The Home Rule Act was passed in 1914, which would have given Ireland some autonomy, but it was suspended when the First World War started. There was an uprising on Easter Day, April 24th in 1916. The Easter Uprising failed to spread beyond Dublin, and the leaders were arrested and executed. Their brutal treatment tipped public opinion in favor of independence. The Irish War of Independence then began in 1919 and continued until 1921. In 1922, the southern 26 counties of Ireland seceded from the United Kingdom. The new country called itself the Irish Free State. Gaelic was restored as the official national language together with English. Ties with Great Britain were cut in 1948. The country became known officially as the Republic of Ireland. The other six countries in the north of Ireland, called Northern Ireland, remained part of the UK which they still are today. End quote. And I think I'm just going to wrap up the current narrative there. For the most part, this video is just for me to share these 3D or supposedly 3D images with you. I know I've received a lot of comments of people who wanted me to make a video trying to find 3D images of different areas or images that were taken like this, that were taken with this old world technology that seem to be able to produce highly detailed images, especially when we look at them up close or with some sort of special device or invention at that time period. Now, 
what I find most intriguing about Ireland. Just like all the other places that we look at, we have all of these massive cathedrals, these massive buildings with the spires and the domes and things like that. But we also have a lot of different evidences of what people would call a cataclysm of mud or a rising of the land. There are many monasteries and buildings themselves, houses in particular, ones that appear to be much older than the rest of the city that are buried under the ground or appear to be jutting out of the ground which have portions of the entire building seemingly at an angle that was cut but doesn't seem to be cut naturally something that was almost dug out in that sort of fashion and one can only imagine how much of these actual structures continue underneath this landscape now there's a lot of other interesting things that you see in these photographs one was a, I believe they called it a causeway or a ropeway. There was a bridge that seemed to be made out of rope, straight out of an Indiana Jones movie. And this rope bridge that stretched across this high mountain top was the only way to access this certain point in Ireland. And it was one of the most famous, the most dangerous areas in Ireland, a place of myth and folklore. But another thing that struck me the most is all of these ruined and ancient castles, these castles that don't really show any indication of brickwork, these castles that appear to be almost molded like the other old things we used to look at. But we also found some more photographs like these, the ones in Belfast where people were complaining, hey, why don't you have more information about this shipbuilding in Belfast? And I know there's older photographs out here. Well. Here you go, here are some photographs from the 1860s and the 1870s, and here is this beautiful bridge I was telling you about, this absolutely mesmerizing bridge, one that would take a whole lot of adrenaline to cross, and just the whole country of Ireland in general is absolutely so beautiful and so massive and appears to have so many different influences that one can only imagine what the old world, the true old world area of Ireland was really like. Now, my favorite part of these images and something I did not see in my research of Ireland using sites like Wikipedia was the Giant's Causeway. Basically, this area that looks like it's a petrified remains of, I don't know, hundreds if not thousands of pillars or other sorts of building devices that once existed on the coastline in Ireland. What we are told, obviously, is nowadays science can explain that these are naturally occurring. But from the way that this was photographed and the way that the people were posing by it and the way that all of these images, these, you know, highly detailed, expensive 3D images were taken, yes, in the main city, in the big city, but also people would take their camera equipment and take all of their finest things and take a trip basically to go see the giant's causeway which itself really does appear to be one of the most important structures of the ancient world whether it is man-made or naturally occurring it certainly was a wonder of ireland that seemed to attract thousands if not hundreds of thousands of people to the giant's causeway every single year and that alongside all of these ancient castles and these other ancient really mysterious things really seem to indicate that this landscape was much more than meets the eye and even as i read through the history there that was what the school system is basically teaching to children who want to learn about ireland and that itself was over 10 maybe 15 years old nowadays i doubt you hear anything about ancient ireland in the schools but Here's just a couple more photographs of this giant's causeway. Basically, at the time, they believed that this was once an area that was occupied or the castle home of a giant. And now it's just a bunch of beautiful pillars of unexplainable, really, origin, just like the rest of Old World Ireland. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. Please let me know which photographs on here stood out to you the most i tried to make sure in this video there were no duplicates we're looking at roughly 125 unique and absolutely never seen before photographs taken in 3d or on these 3d glass slides that predate 1899 and most of them are from the 1860s and 1870s 
So this is the earliest photographic images of Ireland you will ever see. And I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you can support the channel by either hitting the thumbs up subscribing to the channel and please please share this video anywhere that you can because sharing these videos is the best way for the channel to keep growing so i will also leave a link if you want to reach out to me or support the channel and i look forward to speaking to you on the next video and hopefully breaking down this narrative just a bit more